All right, so here we are uh, once again on Dirty Boots Capital. We, uh, we have here today a rock star with us. Uh, we are very privileged. We are on this uh, YouTube channel. One of the things we want to do is showcase uh, just individuals who are doing rock star stuff in their fields and really creating their own personal and financial freedoms in the world, right? So um, and many of those who know me know that I'm in real estate and I love real estate and it gives me an opportunity to create my personal and financial freedoms, but uh, it doesn't have to be in real estate, right? So today we have with us uh, Sarah. She is a rock star in the coffee business. And uh, today she's going to tell us her story of, uh, you know, a little bit of a, her background and how she got started in the coffee business and uh, where, she, where she's taken all that. So welcome, Sarah. It's great to have you. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about your, your coffee business. So um, I got into the coffee business when I was about 24. Um, I had a mentor who wanted to sell me a coffee business that he and his family owned. And I begged my dad for some money and he loaned me the little bit of money. Then it was real cheap, about $20,000 to get in. Hmm. Um, and I got my first coffee stand. So since then, um, which was about 15 years ago, we've grown to 11 stands. Um, we're getting ready to open up our 12th. We're starting to build stands now. Um, and then I've also gone on to do a restaurant and a couple of other things, but coffee is my main thing. Wow. That's fascinating. So 24, you started at 24 years old. 24. Holy cow. Yeah. So for all the young folks that are, that are watching, I mean, that's one of the, one of the things I love about Sarah's story is, you know, uh, you know, you, you don't have to be, uh, old like me to, to start a business, right? You can, uh, you know, take, take the path that Sarah took and 24, 24 years old, starting your own business. That is, that is truly incredible. Um, so you have 11 coffee stands now, right? Mm -hmm. And you're working on two more, creating two more. Are you building out the real estate for those or which direction did you go in? Yeah. So, um, well, maybe I could just start from the beginning of that because uh, there's a couple of different ways that I acquired these stands. So the first one was, like I said, my mentor, and maybe we'll get into the backstory in a little bit of how that all started but and how we met. But um, he offered me this opportunity, and I didn't know how I was going to make it happen, you know. And really the only person that had any money was my dad. He's also an entrepreneur. Um, not necessarily super... Um, responsible with his money. So I think I caught him at a good time, <laughs> but I begged him and begged him and begged him and begged him. And, um, it was, it was a small miracle. He ended up loaning me the money. Um, it was because I had, uh, some money coming to me because my mom died when I was younger. And so there was just that exactly $20,000, exactly what the coffee stand cost. So he, he did it for me. Um, and I struggled, I struggled quite a bit for quite a while learning the business. Um, but I didn't make a lot of money. Um, I knew that I needed to have multiple if I was going to make a decent living at it. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for the next opportunity. Um, I found a girl on Craigslist who was selling a coffee stand on contract. And I'm like, what is this on contract thing, right? For sale by owner type thing, yep. right? And so um, I'm thinking in my head like, wow, if I could come up with this down, because she wanted something crazy, like $80,000 at the time, that was just so mm. much money, right? But I was like, if I can come up with this little bit of money down, I think it may be even like $8,000 down, right? Like little. Um, if I could make this thing cash flow for me as it's paying the loan back, why not? You know? And yeah. so um, I did it and it was slow. Um, and it didn't make enough money for me to want to keep it. I ended up getting rid of it a year later, but that was an awesome experience. I learned then how I could acquire these things because the first one wasn't making enough money for me to actually come up with some significant cash, you know? Yeah. So another lady in town, she ended up opening probably like three or four years after I opened my very first one. 
uh, lingerie stand in oh, town. Okay. So, and these were um, really common over in like Seattle, Portland, big cities, but the very first one over in Spokane. And then I heard how busy she was. And I was like, hmm, like I could do that. Like, yeah, that doesn't bother me at all. Like I should get into that. Right. And so and I always thought, you know, I thought I need like a I'm going to need a partner or something, you know, because I don't have the cash flow, you know. Sure. So I was like, I could get somebody to partner on something like this, like a regular coffee stand that I'm not really making any money at. Like nobody's going to want to go, you know, expand this with me, even though I knew I could if I just if I just built it. Um, but that was like a really good in, right? That was very yeah. interesting. People, it got people's attention. They wanted to talk about like, Hey, do you want to invest in my business? Well, what's your business? Lingerie coffee. They're like, well, if I don't, at least I might know somebody who does. Right. So I'm like yeah. asking my friend's dad, like anybody that was anybody, it took me like a year and a half. And the person that I asked, and you need to ask everybody, I tell when you have something that you want, leave no stones unturned, right? Even if you think it's going to get you nowhere. I even went to the bank knowing yeah. that I wouldn't get a loan. It was like, you know, back in, you, I was not going to get a loan and I knew it, but I yeah. did it because just in case, what if the banker knew some other kind of financing or something that I could look into? That, right? that That's, that's great advice, Sarah, you know, for somebody who's starting out because, you know, I think for for us uh, that that have have created great businesses, right? You know, along the way, it just doesn't happen. It's not like success on day one. Uh, you get kicked in the teeth as as you go along with your business, and right, and you and you get scuffed up, and you have you know um, you get bruises along the way. And it's great that you know perseverance is is huge, and that message of you know, telling the story to everybody you come across, asking people for help that you come across, right? You never know who that person is going to be that says yes, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. So I, I think that's great. Yeah. Anybody who's ever helped me, um, it's never, it's always been shocking, you know, not, not the person that you thought, you know, especially yeah. like Fred. So Fred was the guy, Freddie Miller. He ended up being my very first business partner. <clears throat> excuse me. So he was a customer at the coffee stand, the one that I had that I worked at all the time. And he only came in every so often because he was a professional boxer. So he was in and out. He's an entrepreneur, right? I didn't know. I just knew that he boxed. Right. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. Um, so I go into the coffee stand one weekend. So I wasn't even working. And, you know, I had my hair and my kind of like this, but sideways, like just woke <laughs> up, like whatever. And I see Fred and I'm like, Freddie, you know, like, Hey, cause I don't see him often, you know? And I was like, you want to go into business with me? That was kind of my shtick at the time. You know, yeah. everybody thought oh, you want to go into business with me. You know? <laughs> and he was like, maybe like what, you know, what are you talking about? So I kind of explained it and he goes, write me up a business plan. And I was like, Ooh. Oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, oh yeah. Like, yeah. What, what's a business plan? <laughs> Right. Yeah. I never wrote a business plan. What do I need to put in there? Right. And you yeah. go to Barnes and Noble and you buy a book that says, how do I write a business plan? Right. We've yeah. all been there. <laughs> Seriously. But man, what a wealth of information that I learned so much stuff that I still use to this day. You know, I learned about traffic counts, how to pick a good spot. I didn't know. That's why that other location that I got, it was like in a gas station parking lot off the beaten path. I didn't know. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I didn't know. So um, I learned so much and I, I brought him the business plan and still not knowing anything about Fred, really, you know, not knowing if this was going to go anywhere at all, you know, um, brought it to him and he's like, I love it. Uh, find the spot. And I was like, okay, like, okay. So literally it only took me like a month and a half to find the spot. And he helped me negotiate a killer price. He is a master negotiator. I am not that great at negotiating. <laughs> so, yeah, but you don't you don't have to be as long as there's yeah. somebody in your network, right? Yeah. And you and you know this well. And you know, I bring it forward for for the viewers uh, to understand how important your network is, right? You don't have to be a master negotiator, right? As long as there's somebody in your network who is good at that, who could advise you, who could who you can partner with to negotiate. That's yeah. killer right there. Yes. Yes. And I learned so much from him as well. Um, so yeah, he was my very first partner. And what I ended up giving him was 25% um, for 
$20,000 and I paid him 50% until his initial investment was paid off. And then I paid him 25% thereafter. And he got a, he got a decent return. Yeah. Um, and then he wanted me to buy him out like a couple years later. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did, and, and we still, I mean, we're still, we talk all the time and, um, always looking for new deals to do together, you know? So that was a great relationship. Yeah. And very, very unassuming. Like I never would have thought, I mean, just looking at him, um, and, and knowing a little bit about his past, like he had a bit of a checkered past, Mm -hmm. not a bit actually. Um, he's got quite the story himself. I mean, like, uh, in and out of jail, like he almost went to prison for a long time. He ended up getting out of it. Yeah kind of the, um, into the gang banging, like that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And so had I not come from where I come from, which we'll get into before, <laughs> I probably just would have poo pooed that like, Oh, this guy, ain't, you know what I mean? What's he going to do for me? Yeah. Or something? But, um, I, I knew a hustler when I, when I saw one, you know? Yeah. Um, and Cebu, the guy that sold me my very first coffee stand, you know, I never would have thought he was just one of my customers at the very first coffee stand I ever worked at. And, um, he was just a guy, you know, asking questions about coffee, like a little, actually he's, uh, he works for CPS. He's originally from Laos. So he's got real thick accent and, um, yeah, just asking me questions and I just was willing to answer them, you know? And he's like, I want you to run my coffee stand for me. And I'm like, no, you don't. I know nothing. I'm like, I worked here for two months. Like you really don't, you know, but opportunity, I was like, this is an opportunity. I can't let it pass me by, you know? Yeah. And, and, and and that that that's a, that's a huge thing that's one of the things i i try to stress to to young people is um recognizing opportunity uh when you see it right and and it takes constant reminders you know to remind them about opportunities 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 and i'm working with um with a young gal now she's 19 years old she's going to the local community college I actually met her at a local real estate investment club, right? She was there and right, she she stands out like a sore thumb, right? She's five foot, two inches tall. She's blonde, uh, you know, very beautiful woman, right? Uh, but she's in a room filled with like primarily 50 year old men, yeah. right? And so it was kind of like, you know, are you in the right room kind of a thing? <laughs> and so she was incredibly pleasant, right? And she just told me, she's like, hey, I, I think I want to get into property management. And so we had a great conversation. I'm like, are you sure you want to do property management? And she was like, I don't know, I, I, maybe. And so the conversation went on and I said, hey, I, you know, I might be able to put you in touch with some people who are in property management. But what I'd like to do is if you're open to more of an internship, I'd like to show you a little bit more about real estate, right? And so now, you know, she's come on and she's helping me write articles, uh, some content for my for my uh, real estate website, right? And she's creating all this amazing content around demographics and around the metaverse and blockchain technology. And when I first introduced the concept to her, you know, she was kind of like, uh, I'm not really into this technology isn't my thing, but now that she's done it and she was open to the opportunity and the possibilities. And now she's just like, Oh my God, this is like the, the coolest thing, you know, I, you know, she's doing right now. So recognizing those opportunities, uh, I think are huge for a young person to pick up. So, so kudos for you to you for, you know, recognizing that, you know, at a, at a young age to be able to be like, Hey, this is, you know, opportunities only come around once in a while. Yeah. And I, I was always very opportunistic is what I would call it. Um, I was always looking for, if it wasn't going to be coffee stands, it was going to be something. I just kind of was born an entrepreneur, you know, Mm -hmm. whenever I thought of working a job and getting a paycheck, I, it just felt so wasteful to just, So, 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 so you, so a little bit of the backstory then. So here, here you have a great coffee business, right? You're successful. You can go anywhere, do anything. Uh, and, you know, hey, the, you're free. The time is yours, right? So you talk about, you know, you know, you were always an entrepreneur. So uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, so did you grow up in that environment? Was, you know, was your family in, in, a, in, a, in a business? Did you go to Ivy League, you know, college for, for some sort of finance or business program. I mean, this must have been like second nature for you to, you know, to start your own business. So 
Yeah. I mean, kind of second nature actually. So my dad is a business owner. And, um, so I do have that and we were raised very, very free. I mean, we're honestly, we were raised like wild animals, but um, (laughs) my parents wanted us to be who we were going to be. You know, they didn't want to put any kind of, you know, there's pros and cons to that. But for me, that was an awesome way to be raised. Um, so I didn't like school. Um, I didn't feel comfortable there. I just wanted to be at home. I was an avid reader, so very shy. So I just felt better being at home, being with, you know, my family or being alone, you know, and just reading my books. Um, so school was never something that, um, I was fairly naturally good at it. Um, my teachers, I was the one that always had potential. I had so much potential, you know, and so my teachers were always really frustrated. Um, but I just, I had no interest, you know, I, I wanted to go out and do things. I, I need to move my body. I'm a mover, you know, my dad's the same way. So yeah, it is in my blood and it is in my family. Um, Good. I'm, I'm the only entrepreneur that came out of us five girls somehow, but <laughs> yeah, so maybe we should actually talk about my childhood because it really does tie into everything I've learned, right? As, as, as much as you want to get into your background, that's, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, yeah, it's, it's that whole, you know, I think people look at individuals and they say, you know, they were born rich or they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth of some sort, or they came from money or they went to Ivy league school. Uh, so sometimes, you know, uh, people think, uh, you and me just kind of, it's just luck. We just kind of happened into it and we were successful on day one. And, and I think it's important to share the message that, that, that isn't always the case. At least it wasn't the case with me, right? I grew up in a very, very blue collar family, lived in apartments. And, um, like I was sharing earlier, I, I was by age 12, I was sanding floors with my dad, Re- uh, renovating apartments. I was, you know, as I joke, you know, I was scraping lead paint off of woodwork at age 12, right? So, you know, I probably have lead paint uh, running <laughs> through my veins right yeah. now, right? So uh, it's no joke that was, uh, 12 years old, that was, uh, <laughs> that's all we knew, right? So uh, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I was fortunate enough. I, I built up like you started a business built up and eventually got to the place where, you know, 44 years old, I was able to retire and be free. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you're doing the same thing. So, so yeah, a little bit about your backstory, if you could. Yeah. So, um, well, I was raised in a middle-class family. Um, so, uh, from the outside, it looked a lot better than some of the stuff that was going on on the inside. Um, there was a lot of drug abuse and stuff mm. like that. My dad was running his company, um, he had quit drinking and, and doing drugs so that he could go that way, but my mom never really did. So there was a lot of that going on in the household, and over time, she just got worse and worse. So um, so beyond, beyond being kind of able to just do whatever we wanted, it was a little um, uh, chaotic during those times, right? Because she started getting into meth and, and harder stuff. Wow. So, yeah, so it got pretty bad. Um, but, you know, the middle class, we were like the nice middle class family. You know, my dad was always like showing up to the schools, like great, great father, great. Par- I mean, they loved us. They were great parents, you know, but um, went down. My mom went down a dark path. So mm. um, once it got so bad, um, my dad kept trying to uh, get the drug dealers to quit dealing her drugs. Um, it all came to a head one night. They got in a big fight. A knife was pulled. My mom ended up dying. My yeah. dad ended up going to prison for about five years. Um, that's actually all in my book. So if you want to know. Your I'll book. Know. And and so you wrote a book as well. Oh, my God. So uh, so hold that up again. What was the title of that book? Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. Something Better Brewing. Excellent. So you wrote that book. So that's kind of like your, your a little bit of your backstory, your, your life history there. So, so we, we had your book up there. So, uh, so that's a little bit about your backstory on, you know, where you came from and, and where you are today. Oh yeah. So, well, it goes a little bit. So I ended up after my mom died, I got into drugs. So I ended up, um, 
but basically on the streets uh, using drugs from about 12 to 22. Wow. Um, I got in a bunch of trouble in and out of abusive relationships, had a couple of kids really young, at 17 and 19 years old. I ended up in prison by the time I was 21. Hmm. Um, and then out for, I went twice. So I did about a year and a half and then I did about two years. And then I got out for my final time when I was 24. And um, before I went in for my second um, prison sentence, I met Sivu, who was my mentor. Okay. Um, who wanted me to run his business, right? And Excellent. that's when I was like, no, no, you don't, right? But I have, I, I really, like, this is a great opportunity and I don't want to let it pass me up. So I said, let's go have lunch. And I just told him everything. I was like, I've been in prison before. This is my past. I'm actually going to prison again. And I don't think I'm going to get out of it, you know? Um, and he was like, wow. And he basically had the means to look me up because he worked for CPS and saw that I was being honest, you know? Yeah. And um, he was like, well, thank you for being honest. And um, you'll have a job with me when you get out. And so mm -hmm. as soon as I got out, I called him and he gave me that job. And then a couple months later, he offered to sell me the stand. <laughs> so the fact that my dad was willing to loan me that money given my track record in my past. I mean, literally from 12 years old to 24, I'd been in and out of um, juvie. I'd been to the nut house. They like in and out of treatment centers. And they put me in the um, mental institution for a month because I yeah. uh, was chemically induced schizophrenic is what they called it. So, I mean, I was bad. I was no, no reason to think that I would ever change type person. So, yeah. So, so for the, so for the folks out there who are listening to your story and taking it all in, um, I think the, the big message here is we, we always think we have it pretty bad and, oh, woe is me. I don't, I don't have the money or I don't have the education or, you know, whatever the, you know, the make-believe story is in your head, right? I, I just, uh, these are the things I want to get out to the viewers and why I think your story is so phenomenal in so many different ways is, you know, um, it, you came from a background where you, you could have really gone down a, a, a terrible road, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you pulled yourself out of it, right? You were, you were smart, smart about recognizing opportunities, right? And latching on to mentors, right? And networking with people and telling your story over and over again. And believe me, I'm with you. I've had people who've laughed at me, right? When I was working in the corporate world and I told people I was buying real estate, they were like, ha, 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 you're, you know, you're going to have to deal with evictions and you're going to have to deal with, you know, calls in the middle of the night about toilets overflowing. You know, I, I'm with uh, my my stories aren't aren't as uh, you know uh, breathtaking as as yours, but you know it's the same thing, and that's the message uh, I want to get across to to the viewers is you know no matter what your what the story is going on in your head, um, you know there's there's plenty of opportunity out there, and I, so yeah, that's I mean, it. and use it for your advantage. You know, I mean, I I was running from something as much as I was running towards something like yeah. I, I had a past I had, I mean, I had to grind. I, I didn't jump into NA and AA. I did not want to think about the drug life by, you know, regurgitating that stuff all the time. I just wanted to, you know, plug away and just move on. You know what I mean? I wanted to build something. I wanted to do something, um, in my mind, great. You know, I didn't want to get sober just so I could go work a nine to five. If I knew the future of my life, if I knew <laughs> that I was going to work at this company until I was this age, and then I was going to retire and in between, I was going to have this much vacation. I, I would, I couldn't, I, I yeah. would lose my mind. I mean, that is so dull to me. And that was not the life that I could have imagined. I mean, the life that I left was full of dopamine and wild, <laughs> fun, crazy, fast cars, you know what I mean? Everything was just wild. And it's, yeah. it's hard to leave that, you know, you got to have something that feeds that and definitely being an entrepreneur and, um, the situations I put myself in, I mean, opening up two stores in one week and yeah. just the craziness of that. Talk I mean, about adrenaline. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, to keep going to, yeah, yeah. I didn't, you, 
the value until I could finally get some serotonin going on in my life. <laughs> you know? So, so, um, so I, I, I know some of the circles you're running in today. We were recently, you and I uh, got a chance to see each other uh, again, just this, I guess this past weekend down in Houston, right? Uh, which was great. And so I know you're, you're putting yourself out there, you're networking with great people. Um, and one of the things uh, that I try to share with folks is, you know, your, your luck just doesn't happen, right? You have to put yourself out there, right? And I know you're doing that with, you know, networking with new and different people each and every day. Um, but tell me a little bit about the, the future. I know you're looking at some different real estate, uh, whether it be for your for your coffee business or whether it be for more passive income, you know. So here here you are. You have a uh, a great story from from really rags to riches. You have a great business going on right now, and you're like, I want to do more, right? You want to get into real estate and you know have passive cash flow coming from there. So number one, why, if you're doing so great, right? Yeah. Why, why add that, you know, log to the fire? And then uh, tell me about where, where you want to go with that real estate. So um, I actually, I own three of the properties that um, my coffee stands are on. And um, I was literally forced, I felt like to buy the very first one, because in mm -hmm. my mind, um, at the time there was, there was a lot of opportunity to buy other coffee stands. Now there's not so much, everybody wants to do it. But at the time I kind of had that where if I had a little extra cash, I wanted to go find my next opportunity. And I didn't necessarily want to, I didn't see the value in buying the land at the time. I just didn't see it, you know? And so it took somebody calling an offering on my piece of property and the landlord was like, Hey, you know, I just got an offer on this. Do you want to put an offer in? And then I put in an offer and I got it then I got the bug, then I got it. You know what I mean? Then I saw my lease, you know, my, my payment went down, um, all the write-offs I got from it. Um, and my, my accountants weren't teaching me this stuff. It was stuff I caught on to, right? I was like, wait, yeah. why did I save in taxes this year? Oh, because I bought another business. Oh, because I bought some real estate. Yeah. Well, let's do that again. So right. before the next year ends, I need to buy a piece of real estate or buy another business. Obviously another business was my, my first choice. Um, mm -hmm. But some, as soon as those opportunities started to slow down, down, then I was able to put into real estate and do other things. Um, so, and I do want to do other things because I'm, I'm heavy in the dollar. So yeah. I have great cash flow, but I don't have anything that's solidifying my wealth long term. Yeah. And so, um, and I realize I watched my dad make a lot of mistakes. You know, he had real estate that he sold, real estate that would now be worth like a million dollars that he bought for like. <laughs> Stuff like that. And I'm just like, well, that was a mistake, you know? Yeah. So um, I don't want to miss out on that. And then um, I'm very aware of threats in my environment, uh, given my past and, you know, doing time in prison and that kind of stuff. I'm also very aware of when my freedoms are being um, imposed on, I suppose, on any level, like even just a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and with everything that's going on with the economy, um, and I mean, just to simplify it, just with inflation right now. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I was really worried about that. Um, I didn't know how to make sense of it in my mind. Um, I have been rest assured that I my prices will go up with inflation, so that's a good thing. But, um, you know, if we end up, say, like Venezuela. Yeah. I mean, who's going to be buying coffee, right? So I need other investments. Like, I need something else and that's why we're in the group that we're in because we're looking for answers and potentials and other things that um, long term um, will make us safer i mean the the reason that i wanted to make money the way that i did because I, I i had to figure this out in my head because you make a lot of sacrifices on the way up so you're like why am i doing this but ultimately it was for freedom and for opportunity you're not free when you're working for somebody and living paycheck to paycheck. That is not freedom. So it's always been about freedom and opportunity for me and my children. Um, and that I've, I've witnessed and my dad, you know, it can be gone like that. If you are not wise with where you put that cash, um, I'm still not the best. I spend a lot of money. Um, but 
it's easier for me to make, I think George has actually said this before where I was like, that is interesting that he said that, but it's, it's been, always been easier for me to make money than to save money. So I just focus on making money and that's just been, <laughs> that's been my thing. Yeah. So, so, uh, so maybe a little plug here for, for George. So uh, Sarah's referring to George Gammon and for any of the viewers out there who don't know George Gammon, uh, definitely look him up, uh, check out his YouTube channel, He's a rock star when it comes to everything macro and what's happening in the financial system and just um, how our freedoms are, are being stolen and, and taken away. So, so look up George Gammon, look up the Rebel Capitalist uh, show that he has. Um, great, great um, educational material, great inspiration there. And I love what you said, Sarah, relative to... Um, we always have to be looking for how to protect ourselves, right? It's not just go to your job, work your 40 or 50 hours, right? Come home, you know, watch TV, you know, or, you know, do whatever you do, right? It's always, we have to be cognizant of what's going on around us, you know, in our environment, whether it's the political system, the, uh, the economy, what's going on, what's going on in the monetary system, you're talking about inflation, right? These are all things that we all got to watch out for and say, you know, hey, uh, you know, like I say with a, a friend of mine, he's, he's a great contractor and we talk about how these things are impacting us. So I share with him in, in, in relatable terms. I'm like, so if somebody has $100,000 in their bank account and a year ago, that could buy $100,000 worth of lumber, right? Mm -hmm. Go there today. That hundred thousand dollars worth of lumber that you bought a year ago might only buy you, I don't know, I haven't done the math, but it's something less than a hundred thousand dollars, right? It might be eighty thousand dollars worth of lumber. So you might look in your bank account and say, Hey, I have a hundred thousand dollars in there, but today it doesn't it doesn't have that purchasing power, right? It doesn't have that same purchasing power as it did a year ago. So your wealth is being confiscated by the government through inflation, through their policies, right? And these are things that you and I understand and, and it's, it's great. And it's, again, the message we wanna get across to folks is you can't just focus on, I have a successful coffee business, right? Yeah. God bless you. you, you grew it and you did a great job there, but you're looking for more. You're always looking for more because you wanna protect yourself. You wanna insulate yourself from some of the craziness that's going on in the world so that you preserve your freedoms. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's, and, I think that's great. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard for people to find the time. Um, one thing, and it goes back to, you know, money actually representing freedom and opportunity. Um, obviously my goal was time freedom, right? Um, mm. So I was looking for that person to run my company so I could have the time to spend with my family and to research. I just, I really like, like I told you, I was an avid reader when I was younger. I dropped out of school yeah. in sixth grade, but uh, my mom used to just feed me books before it, I, I dropped out after she passed away, but mm. um, she used to just feed me books because like, I was just like, you know, all the time just wanting all that information. And I, I couldn't stand having to work all the time and not being able to like plug into something and learn. I just love to learn. So um, as soon as I was able to jump out of that and I found somebody great to run my company, I was able to like go to nutritional therapy school. So learn all about health, anything that was important to me. I jumped into the whole vaccine thing before I had my kids. Um, I kind of realized that like our, uh, our um, medical system is like not as great as we think it is. They don't have all the answers. I got into holistic health. I kind of went down this whole path that by the time that um, they were shutting us down or try attempting to shut us down, I knew enough to know that this was not a good idea and that this was going to be all bad. And based on where I came from, I could see in two seconds that the reaction was going to do far more damage than this so-called cure. Yeah, this cold could do. <laughs> yeah, so um and and I was obviously the crazy one. I mean, I had people telling me I was evil and all sorts of stuff because I was yelling at the rooftops, you know, before anybody was willing to say anything. You know, I just kind of am that way. You know, I just 
I'm very passionate and I can't. Well, it well, in. you're you're educated. You're mm -hmm. you're you're educated in how how the system works, yeah. right? And and you know, um, the system. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, so have interest in mind ever. <laughs> exactly. And we have to, we as a society, as a people, we have to realize that, right? We have to realize that if you want to be your, your best, right, you have to look out after yourself. You know, Uncle Sam isn't walking through that door to say, hey, Sarah, I, I got a deal for you, right? That just isn't happening. You have to go out and pursue it. And, you know, I, you know, that's why I think your your story uh, in particular is is so valuable for people to hear. Um, you know, just from so many different aspects. Why don't you throw your book back up so people can see the see the title again? Something better brewing. I love it. I love it. So uh, thank you very much for coming on to my YouTube channel and spending some time with us. Uh, again, thank you. Maybe uh, I'll have you back so we can talk more about the U.S. dollar and inflation and what the yeah. Fed is doing and all that fun stuff. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be a lot of fun. I I geek out over all that stuff. So, thank you. Sarah, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, we'll have you back. Talk more about your real estate and your coffee business. Thanks so much, Tony. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.